Hello, and welcome back to the Thinking Progressive podcast. I'm your host, Ron Rivers. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing how we can use the impeachment process to unite Republican and Democratic voters. Now, before we begin with today's discussion, I want to make some clarifying statements. This isn't an argument about whether or not impeachment is the correct strategic thing to do. Um, That remains to be seen, and and frankly, it's it's not really relevant uh, that much anymore because the process is, is moving full speed ahead. Given today's political climate, talking about unifying the factions is is likely to be met with disbelief and dismissal. Uh, But it's my perspective that unifying the American populace is, is both achievable and desirable. We have a divide that has grown wide enough that it's unlikely to dissipate even in the post Trump era. And I also want to clarify that when I'm when I'm talking about uniting Republicans and Democrats, I'm talking about voters, not the political actors. Far too many of our elected officials are controlled by third parties and rarely have the public's best interests in mind. They're remnants of a politics of a different era, one where the goal was money and power first and and service a, a distant second. Unification has nothing to do with our politicians and everything to do with you and I. Together, we can transcend the artificial barriers that we've inherited but we need to imagine some possible pathways towards that goal first. And our journey today is really going to explore one such path. Thank you for listening to the Thinking Progressive Podcast. Impeachment is here and the opinions are pretty varied. Media produces a constant stream of arguments about whether or not the process is the correct political strategy It's a consistent reinforcement of binary points of view that reinforce our growing polarization. We need an alternative vision of the future, one that rejects the trend of conflict. With a little imagination, we can turn impeachment into the first ripple of a new wave to unite Republican and Democratic voters. Although the full evidence is currently unavailable to the public, the testimony so far suggests that it'll be difficult to deny a crime was committed. Donald Trump's acting chief of staff admits that there was a quid pro quo, an illegal act under Article 2, Section 4 of the United States Constitution. With public trials set to begin tomorrow, we're moving pretty quickly towards a conclusion. There is no question that soliciting a foreign nation to research a political opponent is an impeachable offense. That that is true. But what is uncertain is how the American people are going to react to the impeachment process and how the Senate trial will play out. Americans seem to be shifting to support the impeachment process overall, but our current trajectory is causing deep divides in the American psyche, which will remain without regard to the final results. Every scenario that presents us with negativity creates the possibility for positive outcomes. Using the impeachment process to unify the two parties requires a significant sacrifice from each. But suffering these humilities unites us around the central theme of rooting out corruption in our government. Democratic voters must recognize, embrace, and prioritize the grievances of the rural white working class in relation to corruption. We do so knowing full well that this concession may lead to the downfall of longtime Democratic representatives who have been playing foul. We argue that we must impeach because Trump broke the law. Well, if that's true, then there can be no sacred cows. It's time to pull all the skeletons out. The second burden falls to Republican voters. Unifying around impeachment means supporting impeachment if Trump violated constitutional law. Ending government corruption requires that we embrace the idea that no person is above the law, and certainly not the most powerful elected official. Republican voters are the heroes of this story. They lead with trust and take the first step towards uniting America. A nation of principles and laws can only claim that descriptive if they are willing to enforce them. Impeaching Donald Trump is somewhat hypocritical. Why are Democrats choosing to attack President Donald Trump instead of everyone else involved in foul play? The question is not without merit. So take, for example, Hunter Biden's appointment to the board of Burisma Holdings. 
Uh, it's a Ukrainian natural gas company, and Hunter lacks substantive experience working in Ukraine or in the energy sector. He received compensation that was reportedly as high as $50,000 a month. The right isn't wrong when they cry foul on that arrangement. What about legal corruption, such as insider trading? It's no secret that Congress members have access to privileged information about corporations in the United States and that members of both parties are involved in profiting. In 2008, Visa offered Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi IPO stock access uh, just as HR 5546, uh, which Visa strongly opposed, arrived at the House for a vote. Pelosi and her husband purchased 5,000 shares at 44 bucks per share. Two days later, the stock price increased to $64 per share. Pelosi gained $100,000 overnight. And when H.R. 5546 was put forth, Speaker Pelosi refused to bring it to a vote. More recently, Republican Chris Collins of New York's 27th District pleaded guilty to insider trading and resigned from his position. Collins tipped off his son that a company he invested in had failed its clinical drug trials. This knowledge saved Collins' son $768,000 in losses as they liquidated the stocks before the announcement. The list of political corruption scandals is long, varied, and spans both parties. American politics has historically been a pathway to personal wealth and power. Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. The average American is frustrated with the political class and their consistent trend of gaming the system to enrich themselves. Here, our shared desire to end corruption in government leads us to the first seeds of unification. The central theme in our unifying movement is a choice to support a more pure form of justice. One that treats all individuals equal under our body of laws and encourages a rapid transformation of legal arrangements that fail to reflect and represent the values of American society today. Justice is said to be blind. But in the United States, her eyes are wide open. The wealthy and the poor exist in two different realms of authority and privilege. Now, unifying the country beyond current ideological divides begins with finding common ground. If Republicans, Democrats, and others can agree that flushing out corruption in government is a top priority, then we have a real opportunity to move forward. There is no higher rank position and responsibility in this country than the President of the United States. It is precisely because of his power and stature that the transformation begins with the impeachment of Donald Trump. If we are unwilling to demand legal equality for our most powerful, then we have no hope of achieving it for our common man. Republican voters lead the way in protecting American democracy and law, setting the tone for how we, the people, demand accountability from our government. Now here we break free from the limitations imposed on us by a tribalist political system in favor of a more collaborative approach to justice. Democrats recognize that in return for their trust and cooperation, the concerns of Republican voters are heard and acted upon. Our journey for justice doesn't end with Donald Trump. He is our point of departure. The impeachment should be the first of many investigations into the rampant corruption happening in Congress today. In the spirit of cooperation, Democrats give Republicans the first choice of where to focus after Donald Trump. Do we want to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden's actions in death? So be it. Hillary Clinton's emails? I mean, sure, I guess if that's what you want to focus your turn on, so be it. The process could continue back and forth until the majorities of both parties feel like we've done our due diligence. This partnership holds the potential to route out deep rot. We could join together to unmask Jeffrey Epstein's network, collect what is due from Americans identified in the Panama Papers, and so much more. The process can continue really back and forth until both sides are satisfied. Now, immediately after impeachment, Republican voters decide the next investigation. But after that's complete, we refine our process developing ground rules to ensure that frivolous sham and personal attack investigations are avoided from both parties if they lack proper supporting evidence. 
all of the investigations should be conducted independently, free from any political influence. Results should be presented in full to the public in a variety of formats. Expanding democracy means engaging the public consistently in a form that really resonates with them. It's not enough anymore for Congress to release a 1400 page document. Content should be provided in formats such as video, audio, and brief summaries as well. Members of both parties should recognize that elected officials may come out against this radical cooperation demanding justice. A unity movement is a people's movement. We have everything to gain and little to lose except corrupt career politicians. There's likely little hope of this movement gaining congressional support without firm demands from constituents. Every investigation provides our united front with the potential to reshape our political institutions. In scenarios where corruption seems evident but is legally shrouded, we band together to demand bipartisan cooperation in removing these political class privileges. We demand justice, accountability, clarity, and most important of all, reform. Now these actions aren't without cost. Each investigation is an investment of tax dollars and time. So we'll want to make sure that there is proper supporting evidence before pursuing any pathways. Strengthening national unification has a price, but one that is sure to pay much larger dividends. Now the possibility also exists that there is enough corruption in Congress today to essentially radically reshape the participants. If that is the case, we can ensure the process includes special public elections to replace congressional representatives found guilty of a crime. Now our elected officials may refuse as a whole to move forward with the process. A people's movement would track, mark, and focus on ensuring that those individuals who refuse to meet the public's demand were removed from public office. Refusing to prosecute corruption in a representative democracy where constituents overwhelmingly support it is flat out a dereliction of duty. We're going to learn much about the character of our elected officials through this collaborative effort. Uniting around impeachment is the first step in a long journey. Together, Republican and Democratic voters have to commit to becoming more involved in the process of choosing our representatives. If we demand candidate transparency and access, but we're unwilling to take our local, state, and federal elections seriously, we're just wasting our time. Healing our national divisions begins with imagining possible projects for us to join together around. In this example, our unity takes the form of a return to justice. We demand to exist in a society where elected leadership are bound to the same laws and degrees of punishment as the common man. Together, Republicans and Democrats unite around the construction of ideals, defining not who we are, but who we want to be. It's a movement that only a unified people can bring, but one that would profoundly change the course of American justice towards good.